so the size is almost the same but they're not identical. After posting the recent video about the removable NANs for the M1 Mac, we received a lot of comments like, any plans for the M4 Mac Mini SSD? What about Mac Mini M4? Any solution? And all other similar questions asking for the M4 Mac Mini. And what they are really asking is whether we're going to design our own version of SSD storage for the M4 Mac Mini. Well, challenge accepted. So, in order for us to design it from ground up, we need to study the stock NAND module for the M4 Mac Mini. This is the top side of it, and this is the bottom side. So, the total capacity of your M4 Mac is determined by combining these two NANs here. Whether you're getting 250GB, 500GB, 1TB, or even 2TB. Now, these two NANs are mainly powered by three critical power rails, and that is PP0V9 or 0.9V, then PP1V2 or 1.2V, and finally PP2V5 or 2.2V. Volt. So the top two here are produced by this single proprietary buck converter called Ocarina chip. This is all being done by taking the PP3V8 or 3.8 volt from the gold pins then directly channeled to the input of the Ocarina chip then the single input voltage is being stepped down to the output simultaneously producing the 0.9V and the 1.2V. So everything's going well so far. Then PP2V5 or 2.5V is being produced by another buck converter IC over here by taking the 12V PP bus from the gold pins then step it down to a single 2.5V to the NANs. So right now, everything looks pretty good, right? But not until you know that this single IC is the infamous TPS6280, the one that was responsible for the dead CD3217 IC for the right USB-C port on your newer 14-inch and 16-inch M-series MacBook Pros. You can watch how we describe the problem in this video. And it was also the same IC that blew up thousands of dead NANs on the 2018-2019 MacBook Pros by sending the 12V PP bus direct to the NANs. You can watch how to fix it in this 30 minutes guide video here. And weirdly enough, Apple seems to really love this IC despite its failure since 2018. But for all of you watching this video right now, I would say do not freak out just yet because right now the TPS6180 only powers 2 NANs for this M4 Mac Mini. While the blown up cases from the previous history were all happened when the TPS6180 is powering 4 NANs configuration because technically powering 4 NANs require more amps and power draw, so maybe that's why it failed on this T2 Mac. 2 NANs configuration should require half of that power. So maybe it will be fine? I'm not trying to defend Apple here, so let's see how it goes for another year whether it still fails or not. But if we have the chance to redesign this whole NAND module, we will never use ICs with bad histories. And that has led us to create this mock-up NAND module. In this mock-up design, we use another IC for supplying the 2.5V and most probably we will use the LT8642 IC that has never failed so far. Then the Ocarina chip is still the same for providing 0.9 and 1.2V. Now you might be asking why the design is completely different. Is it going to perform the same? Well, that's the whole idea, that you have to make it look completely different from the original ones to avoid legal issues. If you know, you know. And if you route the copper traces or differential pairs properly according to the design constraints, you can still get the same performance and thus the NAND position really doesn't matter much. Now to be completely honest with you, the development of this third party NAND module is still in the mock-up stage, meaning that it is not fully functioning yet and you can call it fake if you want. But we really need to start somewhere, right? So try to imagine that we live in a world where you have a 250GB base M4 Mac Mini model, then you can easily undone the screen and remove the base SSD. Then you can buy a third-party NAND module somewhere off the market and you can choose whether you want 500GB or 1TB or even 2TB SSD size. And all that you have to do is to pick your choice and plug it into the socket and now you have a 2TB SSD installed. We've also crafted a small handle over here so it's gonna be easier to hold and most importantly, no micro soldering required. At this point, I think we all know that if you possess micro soldering skills, you can easily remove the stock 250GB NANs on one side followed by the other side, then clear all the pads and solder balls, then you can simply solder a new 1TB or 2TB NANs to both sides of this module. Then you put it back to the Mac Mini, then restore it using the secondary Mac. Then as we are waiting for the M4 Mac Mini being restored, you can see this M1 guy here also has a 2TB removable SSD. Pretty cool, right? 
and you finally get it to work again. We've been testing this 2TB configuration without any issues so far, so it's a good thing for the repair shop that can perform micro soldering. But for the end user, we need to wait until this redesigned module becomes a reality, and we need to emphasize that this module is not from Apple. This is a third party upgrade, just like how you plug in the third party NVMe to the old 2015 MacBook Pro. And to end this video, we personally want to say thank you Apple for making the storage removable for the M4 Mac Mini. So maybe it's a good idea to do the same to your thick 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros as you still have a bit of clearance inside there. So we don't have to design a removable SSD adapter for your future MacBooks. And it's really good to see all base Macs finally come with at least 16 gigs of RAM because 8 GB RAM is never enough even for everyday use like we always preached 2 years ago in this video. So overall this M4 Mac Mini is really good with a great value for its price point. Make sure to check it out at the Apple Store. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel as you're all awesome and see you again in December at iBoff RCC channel, reverse engineering at its best.